Thank you very much. Um, yeah, where do I start? Um, actually, I'm, I'm not Keynote 7. In case you read the manual, how to get great ideas comes later. So there's been a little bit of a change to the time schedule. But I really wanted to talk to you. you know, most of my life, I've spent seeing things differently. And it'd be very easy for me to sit here or stand here and talk about some of the things that, that happened. But um, Drew phoned me and said, got a little bit of a problem. One of the speakers has dropped out. Could I um, possibly uh, do a warm up uh, for Luke, who's coming just after me? And I said, yeah, happy to do that. Um, what do you want me to talk about? He said, anything. I said, OK. Um, and that was the end of the conversation. And I put the radio on. And um, it was on Radio 4. And there's an article all about the luck factor. And I've often said I've had a few lucky breaks. And when I think about it, it's probably more than a few lucky breaks. Um, first of all, though, how many people in here think they're lucky, feel lucky? That's great. That's great. OK, unlucky people? Just the one? <laughs> Come on, there's more than that. There must be more. So, so actually, in life, that's about the right statistic. Maybe there should be a few more unlucky people. Maybe you're a bit shy of putting your hand up. But a lot of us feel lucky. You know, 50%, maybe a bit more. Um, I don't feel I've ever looked for a job, though. These things have sort of happened. I've bumped into somebody, or something's happened. But as part of my career, um, I've sat in rally cars and been thrown through a, a, a forest at 100 miles an hour sideways. I've, I've been in Formula One. I've been in uh, offshore and uh, inshore powerboats at 100 miles an hour. I've flown stump plane plus 4G minus 2.8. Um, hot air balloons all over the world. All sorts of adventures, I suppose. I ran the balloon crossing of the Atlantic and the Pacific. I ran the boat crossing for Virgin of, uh, around, across the Atlantic. Um, I then worked for another startup, a 3.5 billion startup satellite company. And we sponsored Virgin or Richard to go around the world. He never quite got round, but that was uh, quite good fun. We managed to, he managed to ditch in the Pacific Ocean on Christmas Day and he in, interrupted all the Christmas programs to bring live Branson, me trying to kill him again. I've tried a number of times and not managed it yet, but uh, you never know. One day, maybe my dream will come true. But, um, but I've had lots of adventures. But then again, I've gone on and I've had lots of other things like um, creating an orange brand and um, creating products like premium economy, finding ice cream moments, all these other things that have gone on. But it's all luck because it sort of just happens to appear. I don't have any degree. I don't have any O levels. I'm dyslexic and so struggled at school. And you say to yourself, well, it, can, it must be luck. Can't be anything else. There's nothing I'm skilled at. You know, I was at Virgin. I'd never worked for an airline before. Never, ever worked. And suddenly, I'm marketing director. I moved from Virgin to a company called Microtel. I'd never been in telecoms before, ever. And I knew nothing about it. And yet, we managed to create Orange. And so often, these things happen from absolutely having no idea of what I was doing. It's got to be luck, hasn't it? And so that's really, really where I wanted to start, because um, I wanted to really try and figure out, are you feeling lucky? now? I've asked how many of you are lucky, but how many of you in the room are feeling lucky? There's a few of you in there, not quite so many, maybe. Come on, guys, it's Friday afternoon, <laughs> right? You could be in the office. You could have to be sweating through those emails. I think, you're, I think you're all pretty lucky, because actually it's an interesting group of people here. And one of the things that Drew does so brilliantly is create this wonderful mixture of different minds. And I'd like to tell you about my book, because you've heard all about all those other books. Mine's going to be called You Lucky Bastard, <laughs> if I ever get around to publishing it. But actually, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to steal. I'm going to steal from Richard Wiseman. I don't know whether anyone, any of you have read this book. One or two, yeah. It's definitely worth a read. And rather than me tell you about his stuff, I'm going to tell you about my stuff through his book. Because he talks about four traits of lucky people. He talks about unlucky people as well. And it's, it's definitely worth a read. It's dirt cheap, definitely worth getting, and just thinking about your life and how that works um, with luck. Because he reckons these four different traits are important for us all. Um, the first one is chance. But it's not chance as in spinning the dice or the roulette wheel. It's chance as in opportunities. 
And I go back to my career and I think, okay, how does that work? Well, I was working in publishing and publishing was a difficult business in the uh, 90s and things were going a little bit haywire. Uh, distribution wasn't too good and the publisher went bust. And a company called uh, Tolman's who had a, full, uh, had a car delivery system and the chairman said, oh, Chris, you know, uh, sorry to hear you've lost your job. Company's gone bust. Um, I was absolutely brassic. I mean, I, I, I hadn't done my expenses for quite a while and suddenly it all disappeared away. Come and join us and uh, we want to go across the Atlantic in a boat. Come and be our marketing guru. Well, I actually didn't say guru, marketing man, I think. But I'd never done marketing before. I'd done promotions and done all the things. But join the Tolman Group. Within a few weeks, I had an office about half the size of this stage shared with another guy called Chris, and sitting in there, he said, oh, Chris, well, I want you to meet the new drivers. This is Derek Warwick, and this is Ayrton Senna. So I sat there with Ayrton Senna and his first drive in Formula One, and we'd go to all the races, have a great time. Um, and sure enough, we had a boat building business as well, so we built high-speed power boats. But really what we wanted to be, build was high-speed military boats. So we built a boat capable of going across the Atlantic and set off from New York to London, and... It was a good, well, good team spirit, and I was running the whole um, logistics of it. I was the last one to fly down to the Scilly Isles to see the boat in and win the Blue Ribbon. And as I came in um, on the helicopter to the Scilly Isles, the, over the radio, Chris, Chris, um, there's a problem, they're sinking. Um, I said, what do you mean they're sinking? Actually, um, they're sinking. And I said, they can't be, uh, they're nearly there. And um, I thought it was a wind up. And I said, I'll talk to you when I get down there. So we landed. Off the, off the helicopter, into the building. They sank, they're done, finished. I said, what happened? They hit something, boat's gone down. That was a stroke of luck for me because actually halfway through the project, I'd agreed with Richard that I was going to sh jump ship from Tolman's and join the airline. But because the boat went down, they had to do another attempt at it. And rather than me having to resign then, I could find a few days later, I could switch to Virgin. And I did. But it was just luck. Met Richard, liked him. We got on together, both dyslexic. Seemed like a great idea. And suddenly, you know, I'm marketing director. Well, actually, sort of marketing director. We only had one aircraft, and it was a great day. If I left work, went home, and there was no plane at the airport, it meant it had left almost on time. And then when I came in in the morning, if it was, it was there, it meant it had got back from New York. So that was a great day as well. But luck, as luck would have it, we had all these opportunities that came our way. Virgin would not be here today if it hadn't been called Virgin. It was originally going to be called British Atlantic. Now there's British Caledonian, British Airways, British Atlantic. What's the difference? And then there was Air Europe and Danair and Air India and Piedmont and Eastern and all the other airlines that had vanished. But Virgin had the way of doing things a little differently. And actually it's part of that, bringing opportunities. So one of the luck, uh, first things is about this chance and opportunities but opportunities to create, opportunities to um, act on. And so I always go around with my eyes wide open and part of that virgin journey, I, I went to New York, I remember going to New York, to Canal Street and I've always enjoyed technology. And I found Sony had come out with this really cool little new device called a Walkman or video Walkman. So I bought a couple of these on my company credit card. I was really quite proud of myself, took them back, said to the engineers, how about we put these on board? For business class passengers. They can watch the film they want to watch rather than the one we want them to watch. And they said, oh yeah, but Chris will have emissions and all sorts of other rubbish. So I said, okay, I'll pay for all of that. We'll get it done. And suddenly the opportunity, the luck was putting this onto an aircraft ahead of everyone else and getting that whole story out there. And from, seat, from, from small seat-based video players, we went to seat back TV and then suddenly the whole aircraft had, had TV. And it was just from a lucky walk past a shop in New York. And as you go through the whole, the whole sort of idea of how do you find it, it's about attitude. So I think luck has a certain amount of attitude to it. And I guess that, as Richard talks about in his book, you can actually get more lucky. Wouldn't that be quite cool? For me, everything we heard this morning about creati creativity, stealing, all the things that were going on, if luck is the most important thing, and I could actually increase my score a bit. That would be fab. And so through all my career, I've had these lucky moments, lucky meetings. Um, but I've also had a relaxed attitude, and he maintains that to be lucky, you can't be too intense. 
you've got to have a relaxed attitude. Try some things. If they don't work, move on. Try lots of different things. So, you know, Virgin on board service, we'd, we'd try cookies and then we tried popcorn and both complete failure. And then we tried ice creams and suddenly ice creams worked. So we moved on. We didn't hang around too long, but it was a lucky break. Nobody else had done ice creams and suddenly we were serving ice creams and people were paying four, five, six hundred pounds for a flight and saying, actually, that ice cream was brilliant. And now Virgin used that as part of their, 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 their DNA in that they want ice cream moments for people. But it was a lucky break that we had doing that. Um, and to me, it's about being open to new experiences. So lucky people are much more open than unlucky people to new experiences, trying something different, doing something in a different way. All of these things talk about the person. How does it make you more lucky? Well, actually, you have a lucky network. And actually, there isn't a better lucky network in the world, I don't think, than like minds. The people here with the ideas and the talent and the business sense and all the other things. So actually, as a network, it's a lucky network. People are up for doing things, up for new experiences, up for trying things. So I think that actually what, what you've got here in the room and in the master classes is a great lucky network. How do, we, how do we take advantage of those? I've got some of these little bracelet things, which is all about one life, live it, and uh, do what you love, love what you, you do. There's a few of them around. I suggest if you grab one and you see somebody else has got one, start a conversation. You never know where it's going to go. You never know what's going to come out of those conversations. There are definitely conversations in this room that could happen that will change your life, because so many of the things that happened with me just started off no idea where it's going to go, but why not? Let's try it. But number two in his list of things is lucky hunches. The idea of having a hunch about something, a gut feel. And so often, I don't know whether you do it, but I do it. I see something, I think, oh, that could be better. Or what if they didn't, what about if they tried that? The idea of trying to find those lucky hunches and make more of them. And actually, they don't all work. But I had a hunch that um, putting, uh, giving, customers, limousines, if you came into um, Gatwick, you were always having to come past Heathrow. And so we said, well, let's give them a limousine. Let's pick them up from anywhere in the country and take them to the airport as part of their business class package. And the accountants and bean counters said, there's no way that's going to work, Chris. It's going to cost us a bloody fortune. They're going to come all the way from Devon and Cornwall, and you know, we'll be, it costs an absolute fortune. Well, actually, nobody really wants to be in the car all that time, so we gave them a free first class rail ticket if they wanted. And actually, what happened? A few weeks later, we looked at it. What was happening is we were phoning them the day before to say, oh, we've, we've got your car arriving tomorrow to pick you up for the airport. They said, oh, actually, I've got a change of day. I want to go the day after or whatever. We were running load factors significantly higher by giving away this limousine than we were before. The load factor went from a sort of about 86% to over 100% because actually we were able to get people well booked in and a uh, much more efficient way of building it. So it paid for itself with just one extra passenger, and we were getting regularly 20 extra passengers. Sometimes the hunches you have, you have to follow through with them. People give up quite often a bit too soon. So to me, that lucky factor is that hunch, that gut feel. Now, I don't know how many people, <laughs> thank you, I don't know how many people use that gut feel, but so often we don't trust it. So many of us sort of think, not quite sure about that. And one of the things is, Lucky people are braver people. They're not prepared to just sort of say, oh, well, maybe. They're, they have that fearless factor in them. And so using that, each one of you, so if you're going to be more lucky, you have to be a bit more fearless, a bit brave, using that gut feel. That whole idea of the head and the heart and the, the gut all working together. So many times I say, I, I, my, my gut's telling me we just have to do this. Orange was an example. A guy came down, we were talking about... What are we going to, it's called Microtel, what are we going to call it? And uh, uh, we, we played around with some ideas. He said, Chris, you can call it whatever you want. I said, so I can call it a color? Yeah, yeah, why not? I said, so what about red? Yeah, yeah. What about orange? Yeah, sounds great. I said, but it's a great, so what about if we call it clear? He said, Chris, you can call it whatever you want. So I wrote those three names down and got one of the guys to check them out because where they registered, what are, and the lawyers came back straight away. Sorry, you can't can't use red, that's a color. Can't use orange, that's a color. And clear, well, yeah, maybe, but um, um, you know, try something else. And I said, whoa, hang on a minute. Who said orange was a color? It's a fruit. And so we went through this whole discussion about whether it was a, a color or a fruit. And actually, as the argument went on, 
my fearlessness got stronger. And so I was thinking, I said, well, actually, so do you. I'm going to call it orange, whether you like it or not. And in the end, in the end, we did register it. It wasn't registered as a color, but as a little Pantone square shape, pretty much a color. But actually, maybe that's what you need, a bit more fearlessness, because so easy. It would have been easy for me to give up. I was told a number of times by the chief exec of the company and the chairman of the, of the business, find something with the word phone or tell him. But actually, within a very, very short time, literally within about 48 hours of launching, the competition were trying to make jokes about us. They were saying we're going to get squeezed and we're going to get a pip and all these other things. But actually, they were talking about us, not about one-to-one -one that was out there in the marketplace. So being fearless, to me, is key, you know, being strong. Um, but also, boosting your intuition. So, so that word intuition comes up quite a lot. How do, you, how do you boost it? And sometimes it's about validating with other people. How do you feel about it? And so with the orange thing, we, the chief exec, guy called Hans Snoop, didn't want to buy it. He, he wanted the word phone or tell in there, needed to do something about it. So we made a little video. And uh, the video was of asking customers if there was a cocktail party to go to. And there was a managing director of Vodafone, the managing director of Cellnet, the managing director of Orange and one-to-one, -one, who would you go and talk to? And almost everyone said, well, I know what the Vodafone guy does and the Cellnet guy is going to be just as boring. Um, the one-to-one -one guy clearly you know, is in the same marketplace. I want to know why they call it Orange. I want to know what he's like. What does he do? And so we just shot this video and, and so showed him the video. Everyone wanted to talk to him and his ego went straight up through, <laughs> through the ceiling. Um, and before you know it, we had some, somebody owning it, which was great. But sometimes it was an intuitive feeling, a gut feeling that actually worked. And actually go out and ask other people. They very quickly said the same thing. So use your intuition, but somehow bolster it. Um, but the number three in the list is expect good fortune and persevere in failure. And so often we get to that point where we're being stopped. You know, people say, no. Sorry, can't happen. I was told it with the ice creams because we didn't have deep freezes and uh, refrigerators on board. I was told it with orange with the, with the legal issues. All these no's, I never accept. It, no is a request for more information for me. So what I do is, tell me no, okay, I'll find a reason to say yes. Branson's famous for saying yes is so much more fun than no. And so I think that's right because actually you see more opportunities. It brings that luck factor into play, but that's the way it works. Um, finally, in his list of four th traits for lucky people, is people who have bad luck, but they turn the bad luck into good luck. And so often, you can get your head down. Something's not gone wrong. So how do I flip it? How do I turn it? And for me, it's so easy to do if you stand back and think differently. So there's been a number of times in my career where I've sat there head in hand. So I was at Virgin, British Airways announced after the Gulf War, I think it was, they wanted to get everyone flying. They said, on the 23rd of June, every flight on British Airways is going to be free. Fantastic, fill your boots, come and participate, it's going to be great. And Virgin, we had about six aircraft at that point. What could we do? Nothing at all. But we took a full page out in, the, in all the UK papers and saying, on the 23rd of July, British Airways is giving away all flights free. We highly recommend you fly with them on that day. For the other 364 days, just remember that Virgin's here. And, and actually, everyone got the fact that we were never going to be able to match it, but we could flip it in some way. Um, it happened when we were, I was doing 118. 118, we launched. We'd had this huge, great issue about how could we build up to the launch of 118, 118. At one point, if you had a pulse, we'd employ you. We got to the launch day. 192 closed down. This flood of calls came in. My finance director was at the desk in the, in, in, in the boardroom from America, he flipped his laptop open, and he put up a computer game, a golfing game. I didn't know, I couldn't see it from my side of the, of the table. It dropped a virus into our system. It somehow managed to get into the telecoms network. All the things Americans are very good at, you know, um, security and all that sort of, somehow disappeared out the window. It crashed the whole system. So we're, there were we with call center in Cardiff, in Plymouth, and in the Philippines, capable of taking something like three to 400,000 calls a day, and we couldn't take a single one. The whole system was engaged. Of course, journalists phoning up saying, how are you getting on? Uh, how's it going today? They all knew this was the big day, and we'd see where the market went. 
and we were giving out an engaged tone. So we said, actually, we have to apologize. Our system's crashed because we've been more popular than our wildest dream. <laughs> we've had so many calls, the switch hasn't managed to take it. And of course, the following day's papers reported that actually 118118 had won the market share. We'd been offered 60% of the market. And sometimes you can turn bad luck into good luck. Um, so for me, it's about don't dwell on failure. Don't let bad luck return. So often, something goes wrong and you allow it to come back again. There was an example where I actually sent out um, 60,000 bomb hoaxes. I was doing a mail shot and uh, we were flying to New York twice uh, uh, a day. And so the concept was let's send all of our business class passengers an item to show them that we've got this twice daily flight. Couldn't find the right thing until suddenly they came along with a cheap idea. Let's send an apple out wrapped in foil saying your, your chance to take two bites out of a big apple. We sent these out, wouldn't go through the letterbox. A couple left on the doormat. Uh, territorial, territorial army guy comes back, sniffs it, smells like Semtex, calls the bomb squad. I'm in Japan waiting to do, a, or there's a balloon flight. Rich is flying the balloon from you know, Kanojo in Japan over to America. He comes waving a fax at me. Well done, Chris. Well done. The headline was Branson sends out 60,000 bomb hoaxes. And uh, he thought it was bloody marvelous. He said, because every, everyone knows now that we fly twice a day, but I wasn't feeling quite so good about it. But I'm sure it's actually made me check that when you do something, get into the detail, make sure that apples go through letterboxes, if that, that's what you're going to send out. But um, for me, finally, is actually have fun. Whatever you're going to do, have fun and be lucky. Thank you very much. Yeah.